EV is a render engine included with Blender 2.8 that renders very quickly. In this Blender video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up indirect lighting for EV by using a light probe called Irradiance Volume. For this video, I'm only going to use non-metallic materials. The Blender version that I'm using is 2.8 Beta. Since this is a beta version of Blender, you should be aware that some of the things that I'll be showing might change. To use Eevee, switch to the Render panel and select it here. To view the rendered image in the viewport, press Z and select Rendered. In this scene, both the sphere and the floor are using the principled shader. They are both non-metallic materials with the roughness set to 1. To light the scene, I'm using a point lamp. When using Eevee, indirect light refers to light that does not come directly from a light source. So in this scene, the light that should bounce off of the floor onto the sphere is indirect lighting. But currently, the bottom side of the sphere is the same color as the background, which means that there is no indirect lighting from the floor. I'll switch to cycles to show you what this should look like. Here you can see that the indirect lighting from the floor makes the bottom of the sphere look red. To achieve this in Eevee, I'm going to use a light probe called Irradiance Volume. So I'll switch back to Eevee. Then to add the light probe, I'll press Shift A, then I'll select Light Probe, and then Irradiance Volume. Now I'll scale it up in size until the inside of the Irradiance Volume object is a little larger than the floor. Then I'll scale it down on the Z axis. Now I'll move it up until the inside of the object is just below the floor. Now I need to bake it. To do that, in the Render panel I'll open the Indirect Lighting section. Then I'll click the Bake Indirect Lighting button. You can see the progress of the bake here. Now we have red indirect lighting from the floor illuminating the bottom of the sphere. These dots inside the Irradiance Volume object are where the light is calculated, so their position can be important. To show you this, I'll rotate the view to the side of the sphere. Then I'll move the Irradiance Volume object down until the bottom set of dots are just below the floor. Then I'll bake the indirect light in again. Since there are no dots between the sphere and the floor, we end up with this jagged gradient on the bottom of the sphere. Now I'll move it up until the dots are between the sphere and the floor. Next, I'll bake the indirect light in again. Now you can see that we have a smooth gradient. The irradiance volume object works well with animation. To show you this, I'll unhide two cubes that I previously added. Both of these cubes are used in the principled shader and they are both non-metallic materials with the roughness set to 1. The object that's going to be in motion is the sphere, so I'm going to move it outside of the irradiance volume object for now. Next, I'll bake the indirect lighting. You'll notice that while the sphere is outside of the irradiance volume object, it's only reflecting the point lamp and the background. When I move it inside, it also reflects the floor color. When it gets close to the blue cube, then it reflects that color as well. So if I were animating this to make the sphere move from the left to the right, then the sphere would first reflect the blue color and then the green color. From this angle, the bottom right side of the sphere always reflects the red floor color. As it moves, it also reflects the blue and then the green cube colors. When it reaches this area, you no longer see the green reflections on the side of the sphere. But if I rotate the view, you'll see that the sphere is still reflecting the green color. Now let's look at how we can use the Irradiance Volume object with emission shaders. This is the same scene that I was working with before I added the cubes, except now the background is set to a black color. Objects that use the emission shader work differently when using Eevee as compared with Cycles. With cycles, an object that has an emission shader can illuminate other objects just like a lamp. In Eevee, this is different. To demonstrate this, I'll click the Free Lighting Cache button so that the Irradiance Volume object will not have an effect. Then I'll enable a mesh plane that I added earlier. Then I'll select the plane and set the material to an emission shader. 
and I'll set the strength to 10. Here we can see the plane, but it does not illuminate any other objects. If I disable the point light source that I've been using for this scene, then the only thing that can be seen is the plane itself. But if I switch to cycles, then the plane will light the floor and the sphere. Now let's see what happens when I use the irradiance volume object. So I'll switch back to Eevee, and then I'll bake the indirect lighting. Now the floor and the sphere have light. But you'll notice that the gradient on the sphere looks blotchy. To improve this, I can increase the resolution of the irradiance volume object. So I'll select it, switch to the object data panel, and increase the X, Y, and Z resolution values to 10. Now I'll bake the indirect lighting. Since I increased the resolution, this is going to take a lot longer to bake. So I'll pause the video until it's done. Now I'll disable the overlay so that we can see the scene better. The gradient on the sphere looks better, but the shadow on the floor does not look correct. Also, the lighting on the floor is not smooth. It has a crisscross pattern on it. So while it's possible to use emission shaders with Eevee, it's my opinion that it's best to avoid using them to light a scene. However, I think they're great when you just want an object to emit its own light. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.